Okay, uh, so the primary's all finished now, and, uh, and the belt drive conversion is fitted. And I just wanted to uh, talk through why we fitted a belt drive conversion. Uh, there, there's various reasons, really. Um, to begin with, I was going to keep the original chain that I was going to, um, system that I was going to put a new primary chain on and I was going to put new clutch plates in. Um, but when I went to order the clutch plates, I always used Surflex clutch plates. Uh, but apparently, for some reason, there's no one's quite sure about, they're unobtainable. None of the suppliers I spoke to had any in stock, and apparently there's a problem ordering new ones. So that was a question mark. And so then I realised that... Um, the cost of a primary chain and new clutch plates wasn't that far off the, the cost of a, of a conversion. Um, plus the fact that the, the owner doesn't want, uh, doesn't want to be doing maintenance. I mean, obviously there's always maintenance to be done, but as little as possible. And um, so when the, when the tension is set on the, on the belt, it should be set for life. And also the belt um, is, uh, it should last indefinitely, should last for life, I mean, beyond the life of the bike. Um, so it's low maintenance uh, and once, you know, it doesn't need touching. Also, because uh, there's no chain, we don't need oil in the primary chain case because the oil is only there really to lubricate the chain. It's not there uh, for the, to lubricate the clutch. You don't really want oil in the clutch. So by running dry, uh, you don't have oil in a clutch, so it's less chance of it slipping under under load. Uh, so that's good. And also there's no chance at all of the oil of any leaks. Now, um, so so those are the main reasons that we, we have for fitting it. Um, but I'm not saying that it's better. I'm not saying I recommend it uh, necessarily. Um, but that, that's, the uh, you know, you pay your money, you take your choice. We could have put a new chain on, but we'd have had to use different clutch plates, which may have worked fine, but I wasn't sure about them. And then there's this system, you don't have to adjust it, it runs dry and so on. Uh, in a Mark uh, 850 Mark III, uh, that's more of a problem because um, there's the sprag bearing for the electric start, uh, on the uh, crankshaft and that does like oil so uh, if you run a mark 3 with a belt drive and there's no oil in it then there's a problem with uh, lubricating the sprag bearing the the bearing at the back of the clutch is sealed it's got grease it so it should be fine because that also needs oil but with the conversion you get one of those sealed bearings and it doesn't need lubricating on my trident t160 i fitted a belt drive about eight years ago, because the Trident T160 has a bespoke primary chain fitted that was only ever made for the T160 by Reynolds, and it's completely unobtainable. So Reynolds stopped making them, and you simply you simply cannot get them. So uh, at the time, there was no other option uh, but to fit a belt drive conversion, which I did. The problem with that is that on the Trident, you have to have oil in the chain case because the oil is shared between the sump and the chain case. There's no oil seal at the back here. So it runs in oil. Now belts don't like running in oil. So I have to change. I change the belt about every five years on the Trident because it doesn't like sit sitting in oil. <coughs> um, but now on the Trident, they now do a chain conversion. So you, they do, uh, you can buy new sprockets which you can then fit uh, a standard primary chain to. Well, actually a primary chain off a T150, the earlier model. Um, but at the time when I did mine, that uh, that option wasn't available. I would, prob on the Trident, I would almost certainly fit the chain version now if I had the choice, but yeah, it's already done. But this one, you know, it should be fine, but I'm not recommending it. But those are the reasons why, in this case, we went for the belt drive. Um, uh, and uh, hopefully, you know, that will prove, now it's done, it will prove reliable and uh, maintenance free. <laughs> Famous last words.
And uh, so I've adjusted the tension on the belt as best uh, to I can. You really want to adjust them hot, but uh, I think that should be fine. You just don't want them too, uh, don't want them too tight, basically. Clutch is sorted. Yeah, yeah. So we're now we're ready to actually put the uh, put the outer casing on. So I've put all the uh, I put all the different uh, caps and, and that in. Uh, with if you're going to have oil in, always use new seals. There are little O rings that go around these, and it's amazing how much they can leak uh, if you don't replace the seals, the O ring seals. Right. Okay. Just encourage that to to stay on. And then it's just simply going to slide on, and there, and it makes up with these two dowels, one at the bottom, one at the top. Uh, fixing that with washer, go down the middle. It's a special washer, not just any old washer. Yeah, and let's see if we can. Uh, that one up. So, this doesn't need to be done up too tight now especially in our case because of course there's no oil in the casing so we don't want to worry about it uh, so I'm just going to do it up tight enough that I know it's not going this nut's not going to come off but obviously you don't want to do it too tight you're going to crack the casing Good, 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 and there we are. I might need to take that casing off again to turn the engine over, because um, I'll be using the uh, using the nut on the end of the crankshaft. But I've, I've got it in place now, just yeah, to make me feel better. So there we are.